Check one, check two. Hello everyone! Happy Thirsty Thursday. I'm gonna put these closer together so that we're looking like in the same general direction. Okay, that works. <laughs> How is everybody today? Um, I'm excited today. Okay. Because I didn't know what we were drinking. Oh, I did keep it. Well, it was a secret. She kept it a secret. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about, today we're talking about our equipment sale. So we have equipment kits on sale right now. 10% off with the code MAKEBEER at checkout now through Saturday. And there are six different equipment kits that are going to be included in that list. But today we're going to talk about the one gallon just basic starter kit. So for anyone that's like brand new to brewing, doesn't have any equipment, mm -hmm. wants to make a one gallon batch of beer, uh, this kit is going to have everything that you need to do that except for bottles and pot and a pot. Bottles in a pot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't know what we were drinking, and then somebody else asked. See, everybody knows now. Oh yeah. Everybody knows, and I was like, wait. I was like, I had one ear, but I had two earbuds, in, and I popped one out real quick, and I was like, wait, what is it? Oh. And it's <laughs> Mosaic IPA. Yeah. Which, when I was going through the list, we're also gonna be talking about the one gallon ingredient kits that come with. Or, they don't come with. They pair the, well with. They pair well with the one gallon equipment kit. And I saw Mosaic IPA on the list. And Mosaic is your favorite hop. It's my favorite hop. I mm. remembered. So, mm. uh, I was like, I was, I was not surprised. Okay. I'm, I'm predictable. <laughs> Do you want to try to get, um, so we can see our Facebook? Yeah. Last week when we, we did this for the first time with the whole Facebook and um, Instagram live, we weren't able to see our Facebook friends, um, their their uh, comments and their feed. Yeah, we can see it on the small screen. Well, but some it's people kinda... can see it. Somebody says, "Good morning, good morning, good best morning. friend Reed, number one fan right there." I love it, love <laughs> it. Let's uh. see. So I'm gonna have to tell you, although Mosaic is my favorite hop, I usually go for beers I know have Mosaic in it, but I don't know that I've ever had a Mosaic IPA. Well, you're gonna today. I know. <laughs> Give it a shot. I don't know if this is gonna. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, yeah. Me. I have really good eyesight, so you I'll do. try and interpret the comments. Uh, someone's waving. Maria Brewing's waving at us. Hello. Oh, and my Happy husband's Thursday, on. Thursday. Hi, Tom. <laughs> oh, yay! He's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Should we give this a try? We should. We should. All right. Cheers. All right. It smells good. Yep. It smells like an IPA. It does. Nice it's and hoppy. You know, that's a good IPA. I think there's like enough hops to it that I'm like, okay, definitely hoppy. It's definitely an IPA. It's hoppy. I don't think it's overbearing. It's not overbearing. Like the bitter flavor that normally hits you at the end, that's like, whoa. There's that's like a little bit of mosaic. it. But. Yeah. I just think it's. Mosaic is nicer. If, if hops have a personality, this one is kind and nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I think my, uh, like, taste profile is all over the place right now because I'll drink one thing and I'm like, oh, I really like that. And then I drink another thing and I'm like, oh wait, I like this more, question mark? More different, but it's so different. It's just different. Mm -hmm. So I think that the real like overall arching theme is that I just like beer. <laughs> I, have I have to agree. I think that is the case. And what you're finding is you like a lot of different kinds of beer. A lot of different kinds. Yes. Um, so let's talk about our one gallon equipment kit. I kind of unboxed it a bit here first. But it's going to look like this, and as you can see, it's kind of big because it's blocking my entire body. <laughs> well, you know, before we even open it, let's talk about some of the reasons we would do a one gallon. I think that's important. Yeah. Because, you know, there's there's a couple different reasons that a one gallon would be a really great equipment to have. First off, if you're not really sure about it and you just want to tinker in beer, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a lot of beer. Obviously, you're only going to get one gallon. That's kind of... Which is like 12 balls, yeah. Right. So it's not a ton and you're still going to have the same cleaning and same sanitizing and same boil day. So you have relatively the same amount of work mm -hmm. as you would for a five-gallon kit. 
but you're just only going to have a one gallon kit. And I would say too, so I've done five gallon here with Nick, mm -hmm. and then I actually just did the um, grapefruit IPA at my mm -hmm. house. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, I did like a condensed down into 30 second brew day. Um, so if you guys have seen fast. that, you can check it out. <laughs> yeah, it was really fast. Someone, comment, someone commented and they were like, they're like, man, if only time went by that quick. <laughs> True that. Um, but no, my, my experience with both, I was really, so I knew how much work it took to do the five gallon, yes. and it was very, like, it was a simple process, but it's very involved to make sure that you have all the steps right at the right time. Yes. Um, which is why reading the directions is so important, like, mm -hmm. and understanding all the steps before you start. Um, so then when, when we did it in my house, um, with the one gallon, I was like, okay, I, I've done enough now to know that I need to make sure I have this, this, and this in place. But it was so simple. Like, it was literally just, it's a very good introductory kit, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is like, anyone that doesn't know anything about home brewing, you read through it, and it's so simple. It's basically boil some water, add some things for certain amounts of time, and then cool it down. Like, it's not that hard. No. Um... So I think that a one-gallon kit compared to a five-gallon kit, at least in my opinion, seems like a lot less intimidating because you don't have to, I don't know, it's just like cooking at home on a stove, which we've talked about how good I am. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, and that, I, maybe that's where our perspective comes different. You know, we, we had a family of six. You know, there were four boys, my husband and I. And um, cooking for family of six oh, yeah. <laughs> became very second nature to me. So that whole big, you know, pot yeah, yeah. thing isn't intimidating at all. And so what I always look at is, you know, like kind of your return on your investment. If I'm going to spend an hour boiling, how right. much do I want? If I'm going to go back and I'm going to rack it, how That's much do true. I want? Because, you know, it, it's like the difference between, you know, if I'm if I'm doing um, lasagna roll-ups for individuals, it's going to take me 10 times longer than if I do a pan of There's lasagna. There's a pan of lasagna, okay. I got gotcha. you. So that's my perspective on it. You know, so. Um, but cost, too. But I But here's what I believe, Okay. I believe the one gallon kit is the perfect kit if it's, it's a lot like what you were just talking about, if you want to go off-roading, if you want to try a profile that you're not sure about, oh, it yeah. is the perfect test batch. Because then you're not stuck with five gallons of beer that you're like, this beer sucks. Or like <laughs> the cost and the time. You can do this and play with it. Mm -hmm. Really have a good time with a one gallon batch. And right. then, then you can say, now I have, I have my recipe, it's in my notebook, I'm good to go, I can multiply it by five, I right. feel confident. As far as space, too, I live in an apartment, um, and just the equipment for just one gallon, like, it's really easy to, like, throw in a closet. A and, tiny little bucket. Yeah, whatever, whereas, mm -hmm. like, I don't have anywhere outdoors to, like, I mean, not that you have to do real outdoors, but, like, I don't have anywhere outdoors to, like, set up a big thing and, like, mm -hmm. do all that. So it was really convenient for me. I don't right. know, Like, I had a lot of fun. Bottling day is, like, I think in, like, a week, week and a half. It should be soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's probably sooner than that. I put it in my calendar so I don't forget. Perfect. But I'm excited, and I'm going to try and document that process so that I can share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. Um... Ruta Brew House, Ruta Brew House, you're always um, posting stuff. We appreciate it. They say cheers. Cheers right back at you. Absolutely. 11 o'clock in the morning. You can't beat this. Morning. Well, well, I don't know what time it is, uh, your time, but someone says, I use a one gallon kit to learn how to brew a beer. And then as Paula said, scale it up. Big Brew Day on May 1st. Yeah, Big yeah. Brew Day. So mm -hmm. I'll talk just briefly about Big Brew Day. Do it. Um, Big Brew Day is May 1st. It's the 24th annual Big Brew Day. <sighs> Um, and it is put on by the American Homebrewers Association. And basically, um, it's just a day where everyone get... Normally, people get together and they brew. Um, but, the like, last year and this year, they're going a little bit more of a virtual route. Um, and you can get $5 off your a AHA membership until May 9th. Okay. Um, if you j use the code BIGBREW21 at, at their, like, membership checkout. Um, and... The Big Brew recipes, there's two different recipes this year. Um, the first one is a Janet's Brown Ale, and the second one is a Stargazer IPA. And so you can find both of those recipes um, on their site. If you just Google Big Brew Day, you can find all the information. And I did go ahead and put together a blog post on our site, homebrewhow.com, where it will list all of the ingredients and links to all of them, 
or you can buy it on our site and get those ingredients for Big Brew Day. So all the information is there, and uh, yeah, it should be a good time. May is like rolling Absolutely. around. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crazy. good way to celebrate. And I think brewing in the fall, or in the spring and fall, are the, the two times that it's just easier. You know, summer you're so busy and you get involved and I don't know, I get distracted I feel by like the sunshine. Summer, I feel like summer is like the time to like drink sit it. back and sit. Yeah, it's time to drink it. <laughs> We're on the same page. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, now is the time and you know, there's so much out there. Hops wise, you've been talking about the new hops. If, yeah. you're, if you're on our newsletter, you've been seeing that we're carrying a whole other line. I yeah. mean, get creative. And that's that's what the one-gallon equipment kit is for. Yeah. And with the one-gallon equipment kit, too, I think, um, I don't know if we said it already, but the price. I wouldn't. Like, if you're just like, if you're like, I don't really know about home brewing. It's like, I want to say this is forty nine ninety nine, I believe. Yeah, forty or forty four ninety nine for the one-gallon equipment kit. And you're it, like you're gonna have it for multiple multiple. It's the, it's less than the price of going out to dinner, and you're gonna get to really have a good time with it. Right. It's entertainment too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Experiences, not things. Well, things for experiences. I'm all about that. Though. <laughs> I'm all about making sure that you know we things kind of get broken or whatever, but experiences and hobbies and passions oh, kind of last sure. a, a lifetime. Yeah. For that's sure. why I, forever we took our kids skiing for Christmas instead of Christmas gifts. Instead of Christmas gifts, and I bet that they remember that. Oh, you <laughs> ought to hear them talk about it. <laughs> well, let's get this open. I can't wait to see what's in it. All right. Even though I know. I'm going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, first up, you're going to have a bottle brush. Um, so there's that. Yes. Fits perfectly in any of your beer bottles, but it also works in wine bottles. So I said, I did my second brew last weekend. I'm moving to my second fermentation today. My ABV is still lower than it should be, but it's higher than my first time. Yeah. You're there. yeah. When you're starting off, it's a bit of an experiment. I know the first time that I made wine, I severely, severely messed up. I don't know if I've ever told you that story, mm -hmm. but I really messed up. Did you put too much water in? Um, water yeah. In? Yeah. I put way too much. I just... I, this sounds so, duh, but I just didn't, like, measure the water. Like, I just was like, oh, I'll put water in, and I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. So, and see, and I always, I'm on, I air. I but, fixed it. But you see, I, I <laughs> bake. So, so there's the precision. So what I do is I put in a little bit less water than they call for. And then I do a water. gravity reading, and then I can add water to get it to that point because I never want to have to play the let me put more sugar in and right get yeah it. which is what I had to do yeah and I mean you can do it in temperature conversion and all that I didn't yeah. know any of it yeah so. so I'm way happier just keeping it low doing a gravity read then kind of knowing okay yes yeah, yeah, yeah. top it up Brookmead Brewing is online they have their photos Brookmead Brewing I love your Instagram account love it they they take the Graphics. best photos so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so next up, there's the tubing with the clamp. Yes, yeah, so you have your tubing, you have your clamp, the clamp will, will work really well, it just kind of, if I can get this, it clicks in place to, uh, clo to close off so that you're not making a mess, it's fantastic. All these pieces can be purchased separately, so, um, this is your tubing, and it's going to feel like it's a really, really tight fit, and if you've seen other, other um, <laughs> videos, it is a really tight fit, but... Use warm water when you're doing your sanitizer and, and let it be wet and it will work really well. Yeah, it really helps, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and that connects to the auto siphon, which I'll go ahead and leave in the package. But basically, you just pump this guy twice, the handle, and it'll uh, transfer your beverage from one container to another. I saw a guy today, um, I felt kind of bad. He was doing a video and he had a small funnel connected to a big funnel, like in a sort of like wobbly tower and he was like pouring his one gallon bat and I was like it worked but I was like oh buddy like you need one of these it, yeah, I, was, <laughs> I, I was like I was like he needs an auto safe it made my heart like oh because that could be a mess you want to just mesh his him the other thing is there's a I should shouldn't you I? should you should be like we can we can make this easier on you for <laughs> just a few bucks but there's also an anti-sediment tip at the bottom so that comes in handy when you're racking and you're not pulling up all of the debris Especially if you're doing it by yourself. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, and then we have got the Red Baron capper. This is the Red Baron one, right? It is. Yeah. Um, just a simple capper. It, this part is like magnetic. So you go ahead and you put the cap there and it holds it. And then you can just 
Yeah, it's fantastic, and I think we've got a video of it. So we just put that baby right on there, and it crimps it, and it's quick, and it's easy, and this mechanism lasts for a long time. If anyone has, like, tutorial videos you want us to make, too, um, Paul Shout and I, out. Yeah, Paul and I try to do our best to make tutorial videos. They go up on our YouTube channel, and they also go up on our TikTok, and then I try to put them on Facebook and Instagram as well. So, um, I have a knife. Do you? I do. Wow, look at you. Prepared. Almost like I've uh, done this little. <laughs> so these come well um, packaged for a reason. They're all the breakables. Yeah, in, I, in my mind I was thinking I could just undo the tape, but. It just, you know. Yeah, probably. There we go. All right, so this is going to be a thermometer. It's a laboratory grade thermometer, so it's going to give you a very fast reading, which is great when you're doing the boil. So you can just kind of hold it in there, check it out that way. Um, also, it's good for checking like the that. temperature to make sure that when you are cooling your wort, you have cooled it down um, appropriately prior to pitching your yeast. So there's that. Yeah, I really like those. And it's got a little place where if you wanted to put like a string on it or something, you could do that. That's probably a really good idea, actually. It's not a half bad one. There you go. How about this one? Um, so this is a test jar. So basically we're, what you're going to do is, um, for any of those, for those of you that haven't brewed, basically after your boil, like initial day, you're going to take a, hydro a hydrometer reading. Um, so you'll take your little, what is a wine thief? Is that yeah. what they call it? I you take it and you put it, you put the liquid in here and then you drop your hydrometer in and then you take your reading. So. And it floats at the level that you're going to read it. And we do have a... A we also have a that video too. on that. Um, something about that is when I was making my one gallon IPA kit last a couple weekends ago, I was like, oh man, I messed this up again. Because <laughs> when I put it in here, it wasn't floating. You have to get the liquid high enough <laughs> to the point where it will float. So um, my husband, the uh, automotive <laughs> science engineer guy, engineer yeah. guy was like, Hey, uh, maybe put some more liquid in there. I put like this much more liquid in it. <laughs> Came right up. There so. you go. And I'm really happy that this is included because this this is something you want to check on. Some kits consider this an additional accessory and some kits consider it a, a must have. So just read what's in the kit to see. If it doesn't have a, um, a test jar, you're going to want one. And you just need a plastic one. That's all. Yeah. And I, at first I was thinking like, oh, well, why can't I just drop it into the bucket? It, it's way easier to read in one of these. I tried dropping it into the bucket. It, like, it's hard to read. Um, then you're going to have your three-piece airlock. So this is the guy that you put in the top of your fermentation bucket, um, which we'll show you here in just a sec. And you, you fill it, it with sanitizer slash water. I use star sand. Yeah. Is that, is that why you're laughing? Because I was showing in the package. I saw you laughing I'm just smiling in the back. At you. <laughs> you're just smiling. I know, you're trying to be, she, she's just trying to be so respectful that we can put this back and it's not like marred. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure if we're going to. I have, I have a whole repackaging room. We can make this look brand new again. Right. It is brand new. We haven't used it. <laughs> right. We're good. I, I got you. That's this, why we're here together. This morning I was literally making videos on how to use the repackaging machine. <laughs> And then we're gonna go ahead and use it. Oh man! All right. Um. Then we have our bottling wand. Now, fun fact: I don't know if anyone saw um the one of the last lives that I did, but when you use this, you're gonna want to depress this bottom part here, so that you don't just create a pressure bomb with and... your auto siphon. <laughs> yeah. So you have your auto siphon hooked up to your tubing, your other end of your tubing hooked up to this bottling wand, and yes, you do need to have an open system and not a closed system, or you will wear your wine. <laughs> In this case, beer. Mm -hmm. um, then we have your one gallon glass jug. It's also sometimes called a carboy, and has a nice little handle there. <laughs> Someone said, we all saw. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. I still have a little red mark on my shoe. 
from, you actually... from when we were bottling. I don't know what I did, but I clearly I spilled out. Oh, I felt bad because I was like, oh no, was it me? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it was me. I was bottling it. Um, and I didn't know it till I saw my grandpuppy who was like, whoa, grandpa has wine on her foot. <laughs> Licking that. Um, so this is your one gallon uh, glass jug. This is what you're going to put your beer in for the secondary fermentation. So you'll do your brew day and you'll go ahead and put it in the bucket that I'm about to show you. Then after that, you'll let it um, sit for five to six days until the fermentation has almost stopped, but not completely. Um, and then you'll go ahead and use the auto siphon to transfer it, which is also sometimes called racking. Um, you'll transfer it from the bucket to this jug. And what that does is it gets the beer up and off the sediment on the bottom so that it helps aid, like, aid it in clearing um, so that you come out with a clear product. Um, unless you're making like a hazy something and it's intended to be a pretty hazy product. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the auto or the uh, hydrometer that we were talking about earlier, and I don't know if I've ever told this story on the live before, but Mike, the owner, when I first started working here, he said, "Hey, make a wine kit." I said, "Okay." So I took the um, I took everything home that I needed, and he said, he specifically said to me. The hydrometer is very fragile, so be careful you don't break it. So I take this thing out of the package, and I set it in my bucket, and then I pick my bucket up to literally just move it to, like, a foot away. Boom. This, like, tips, and this end breaks and shatters. And I don't know how well you guys can see, but literally all these little metal beads in the end just went everywhere and you were like man i hate when he's right yeah it doesn't happen yeah it doesn't, doesn't happen, happen, happen all often. Of it. No. yeah no. <laughs> he's not watching right now he's busy <laughs> but um yeah so a glass hydrometer uh it's great but be very careful because yes. they're fragile and and um, for this you're going to use a triple scale hydrometer so if you get online and you have to do you know get one or you need to replace one it is not a proof and trail hydrometer it is a triple scale hydrometer that's used for fermentation and I don't know if you can kind of see here, but there's lines that basically tell you um, what level it's at. So the orange is like beer, greens, beer. Well, there's all different. Mm -hmm. It depends stuff, on but yeah, kind original of gravity, final gravity. Yeah, it also comes with instructions on the inside. It's like important to note that there's certain temperatures that it's like calibrated to. So and it'll, te it'll show you how to, to calculate the ABV as well. Yeah. I feel a lot better about that being back in its case. <laughs> oh, we've got a friend on Facebook talking. Someone to says, you guys, Billy Somers, you guys are a great company. My go-to for brew, brew, brew supply. <laughs> oh, well, we appreciate that. Yeah, even though you're, you're kind of far away. They're on the border of Indiana, but hey. Of Indiana, here, wait, I got to see this full comment. What's going so on So the here? other part of that is, I don't know if you guys know, but we have reopened the store. Oh, yeah, we didn't mention that. We've reopened! Yay! I, we should have put that at the beginning. They shut up. But. Here. Mm -hmm. um, I, so usually, you guys don't know this, but uh, I, I try to like choose the best picture. So if we just go, yeah! It's, uh, yeah, I'm going to see my face looking like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, just before you head over, check the website, check the, the hours, because they are a little bit different than they used to be. They are limited. I'm, I'm having um, some staffing problems. As you know, as you know, we're not selling t-shirts. It's you know, t-shirts are something anybody in the world can sell because um, we all know about t-shirts, but we're not. Although we're selling we do have some We do have t-shirts. <laughs> um, but I need to find the per people who you know understand brewing and appreciate beer and wine and can help with um, yeast and grain and and really have a kind of an understanding of the science behind it which takes a, a special person yeah and so we are doing our best to keep the store open and managed but we are not open on saturdays so we're open sunday through friday and um 10 to 5 and then sunday is just 10 to 2 but um hopefully when we get that right person we can expand that yeah because there's nothing worse than going into a store and asking for someone for help i don't know and then they're like uh which Obviously, it's understandable. Like, you're, people are going to have questions, and you shouldn't just be expected to know everything under and the sun. And you can't know everything. You can't. 
But I understand what you mean about trying to make staff as knowledgeable as possible. You need a basic understanding so. of the process and then you will continue to learn. But it, it takes about a year to get right. someone really comfortable yeah. in a store like this. I've been here for about a year and I just feel like I'm at the point where I could... If someone came in and I was like, I'm brand new, I don't know what I'm doing... I think I could help them, but someone that was like really advanced and needed specialized knowledge, I'd be like, be like, that's what I'd give them. I'd be like, good luck. <laughs> so we're working on it, but we are open, and we just, you know, we're we're uh, thrilled to be open. Yeah, we are. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, next next thing that we have is Easy Clean. So this is going to be your your cleaner that's included with the kit. Um, no, this is not sanitizer, so you'll still have to get. Um, star sand or we actually have a product called sand step um, yeah but I really like star sand <laughs> I know star sand it's on sale but I like the other one but what I was going to say is it doesn't ship well um, so mm -hmm. th so we normally don't ship it the sand step so if you if you do have the option to come into the store and you do like sand step um, it's on sale. I think it's on sale for like nine ninety nine. It's on sale for nine ninety nine. It's normally twenty dollars. I know it's a deal. It's a good so, deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So this is a little sticky thermometer that basically goes on the side of your bucket. So Corey Jones says the store is reopened. Yay! How we feel about That's it. How we we have too. missed our brewers. Um. Yeah, and a few people have been, like, coming in and out, and it's been really nice to, like, see, pe like, see people in the store, because I've only been here when it's closed. Yeah. Um, she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand <laughs> how much fun it is for a brewer to be able to walk in oh. and just see it all and touch it and feel it. It's like, like, if you go to a climbing shop and you could see all the ropes and all oh, the harnesses sure. and all the shoes and yeah. all the things, you're like, it makes a difference than just picking it out online. Yeah, 100%. And we have some good sales going, too. We do. Um, really good sales. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, come in and see us. But literally, come in and see us. You won't. You won't regret it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But sticky th high. Thermometer. 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 <laughs> I'm helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, 38 millimeter white metal white cap with a hole is what it's called. <laughs> I know, fancy. Uh, I mean, it's honest. Uh, this goes for the top of your. Uh, and then this Drive. guy goes in, and that goes boom. on top. Boom. Um, let's see what else we've got in here. There is just some different pamphlets. Uh, I'm assuming about different kits that we carry. Um, well, it's going to give you the ingredient kit. So this is the ingredient kit pamphlet, which is nice to have. Um, and then... This talks one? about um, oh, all spices the additives and additives. And yeah. So you can make things, you know, your original. We've talked about plus one before. When you pick a, a kit and then you say, I'm, I'm going to add one ingredient to make it really exciting. You know, you pick like uh, like the Kolsch kit we have and you say, oh, I'm going to do a raspberry Kolsch. So you do a ra uh, you grab a raspberry natural flavor. I'm like trying to pay attention while still struggling. <laughs> the struggle's real. We're good. <laughs> um, I didn't, I forgot that this was included, but mm -hmm. it does include your, uh, it Star. includes Iostar. Mm -hmm. So this Which is, is a, iodine it's based. Good. Yep, yep. It's a it's a very very good um, sanitizer as well. Um. Then last but not least, this is why I was struggling. It's because it's a tight fit. Um. We have got a bucket. It's a two gallon bucket. So you're doing a one gallon batch. It's going to give you a, a, an ample amount of headspace. So you're not going to have to worry about it popping off or anything crazy. And then it's going to come with the lid with the grommeted, mm -hmm. uh, grommeted lid, so that this also fits in here. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Sweet. Yes. And, um, by the way, if you decide to do the one-gallon beer and you're like, okay, I've got this mastered, I'm going to go to the five-gallon beer. But someone in your life loves wine. All of this would work perfectly for one-gallon batches of wine as well. Mm -hmm. And so there's a recipe book, and we didn't talk about talking about this, but called The Winemaker's Recipe Book. How original, I know. And it's cheap. It's cheap. It's, yeah. a, it's a paper book. It has over a hundred, if I had to guess. This is like your favorite book. It is my favorite book. She literally talked, I don't think she's ever talked about Sloan Live. She's like in love with this book, I, I swear. Know. It's the best book. <laughs> it's got like a hundred different um, wine from fruit, 
kind of recipes in the one gallon version. So don't put this away, just try something new. Um, real briefly too, on that note, we do have Mother's Day is coming up quicker than you may think. So Mother's Day, oh, yes. Mother's Day is May 9th, um, and we're going to be running some sales and things during that time. Um, but there's nothing saying that you can't take advantage of the sale that we're having now and go ahead and purchase um, some equipment for your mom to make beer or wine or whatever she wants to make, mead. Moms like to drink. Yeah, moms do like to drink. <laughs> I'm not a mom, but we just I've do. met many moms they like to drink. drink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so let's, that's the equipment kit. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, different ingredient kits that could go with it. So we have 18 different Brewer's Best one gallon ingredient kits. Um, and I believe that's the only thing that we carry for, like, that's it. We, mm-hmm. we don't carry anything but Brewer's Best for one for gallon. For one gallon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's 18 different ones. I just went ahead and pulled a few. We have a sampling. Um, a sampling. But they're all going to fall in the sixteen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine range. And there are a couple that are on sale, but I mean sixteen ninety nine, like, that's a great price. That's just fun. That's just fun. And that's the where you you're talking about like, oh what the heck, I'm just gonna try this. I, like you go out to dinner and it's it's more expensive than that, and this is something that you're you can get a, a lot of fun out of. Right. So the first one we're going to have um, is the Mosaic IPA, which is coincidentally what we're drinking. Uh, I will tell you, it's delicious. I really like this. Uh, so this one is going to be 6 to 6.5%. No so joke. it's up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's obviously going to have Mosaic hops. Mm-hmm. Um, what else about the Mosaic IPA? I wrote in the notes that it was your favorite. It is. It is. And, and so. you know, um, one of our, our live viewers just reminded me, not just um, beer and wine for this, mead. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you can use this kit. The one gallon, we do one gallon mead. When we do mead and we do a one gallon, cause, just because we're not beekeepers and honey is fairly expensive. Right. But um, it would be perfect for that as well. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have... Uh, grapefruit IPA. What made you choose this one to try? So my friend, I'm brewing with my friend, and she, I basically sent her our homepage of the one gallon okay. kits. Okay. I said, "What sounds good to you?" And she like, I'm gonna name drop real quick, so don't worry. Right but she, her favorite beer is the Truth IPA from um, what is it, Ryan Geist? Okay. Um, she loves that, and she was like, "Is it?" She sent me the link. She's like, "Is this gonna be similar to it?" And I was like, "I would imagine that it'd be similar." So. Uh, it has a little bit lower ABV because I think that's what, like seven percent. Okay. This is five to five percent or f- five to five and a half percent. Okay. So um yeah, great for IPA. And when we were making it, it has a lot of hops. Like I was surprised for. For a one gallon. Yeah, but I was surprised because the IBU is only um forty to four, forty-one to forty-five. Okay. And I was really surprised that it was that low because it seemed like. There's a lot of hops well, I can't wait to hear what you think of it. I'm so excited. I'm definitely going to do a taste test. Okay. Oh my gosh, we should do a live taste test with my of first your ever home brew. I agree. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, like, <laughs> what if we hate it? <laughs> I'll be like, oh, you can try again. You'll be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Courtney brewed this one. Well, I want to talk about this one myself because this is the pineapple honey wheat. And that sounds we delicious. We made this last year. Amazing. Probably one of my top five that we've made in house. Dang. And I was sad that it was only a one gallon. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'd imagine too that this could be adapted into just a honey wheat or a different flavor as well. Absolutely. But the other good thing I think about is I just said, oh, too bad it's only in one gallon. But if you made the one gallon and you liked it, you just take the recipe, multiply it by five, and do it again and again and again. Scale it up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Pineapple honey wheat. That sounds yeah. delicious. Yeah, no joke. Uh, Imperial IPA is the next one. Now, Imperial, for anyone that doesn't know what Imperial is, it basically just means more alcohol. <laughs> so if you're like, if you like uh, beers that have higher APVs, APVs, <laughs> ABVs, you're going to want to look for things that say Imperial, and that will be your ticket. So this is seven to seven point six percent. Ooh, that's a big boy. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I be used on this for sixty eight to seventy two, so fairly. Pretty happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No pun there, right? 
Oh, man. I told Paula that this Homebrew Ohio brand is just taking on my personality. Sorry about it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> All right. Um, American Classic. Mm -hmm. So the American Classic, we actually have um, a set where it's the kit, the ingredient kit, but it also is basically the same version of the equipment kit that we just showed you, um, but it's all in one. I believe it's around 65 ish dollars, something like that, for the American Classic kit. It comes with the ingredient kit and the equipment I to know. make it. Um, yeah, apparently. Well, we probably have it paired together. It's paired together. Did I do that? I'm assuming so. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Yeah. So it's basically like. Is it a gift collection? Um, it's not a gift. I mean, yeah, it's. I think it's in the okay. gift section, but it's basically like, mm. my son or daughter wants to brew beer. What should I get them? And ta -da. Ta -da. there you go. Okay. Well, I'm so, glad I did that. Yeah, my little brother made this. I got him that collection for Christmas, and he made it, and he brewed it, and then they had it for um, Super Bowl Sunday, and he he said that it was a lot of fun, like yeah. brewing it and then having the beer with his friends because he's in college, so. Um, and chocolate stout. Mm. Yeah. No uh, joke. Chocolate stout is 4.9 to 5.5 ABV with RBUs of 36 to 40. Um, okay. Yeah. I just know I would like it. There's not much to say. Yes, I will have one. Sweet. <laughs> it's that easy. Yes, I will yes, have one. Yes, I will have one. Uh, okay, we'll move on from that one because that was funny. Um, Belgian Saison. Uh, I really like Saison. I've only had one and I loved it. Was it on a live? No, it wasn't on a live. It was when I was brewing with some people. Oh, okay. And he uh, gave me like some of his home brewed Saison. And it, he said that he twisted it a bit. It wasn't quite as like uh, cinnamony as they tend to be or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really liked it. it Do you really think good. it was kind of citrusy? Yeah, it was a bit more citrusy. It was like when I first, first started working here. Um, Bad Dude Brews, if you guys are watching this at any point, thank you. Because you made me fall in love with Saison. But it was really good. Um, but it was when I first was like working here and I hadn't tasted a lot of beers. And I was like... Wow, this is really a lot. Like, there but was it just was a lot different than than the American yeah. lights yeah. of the world, right? The American lights. The American of the lights of the world. <laughs> you, have, you have a comment over here. Do I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody says, "Oh, somebody says the pineapple honey wheat." They scaled it up um, mm -hmm. and did Good a choice and did a braggot, um and took the pineapple out. Okay. Yeah. I, that's what I love too. You start with this fantastic recipe that Brewers Best has spent some really time, a, a lot of time and science and energy, and you know it's a good recipe. So if you want to play with it a little bit, your base is always going to be successful. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It's really. Don't hate me. Anyone that's watching, but I'm going to make a statement. It's not hard to make beer that tastes good. Would you say that's correct? I would agree. I'm not because sure. Because I going. think that some people would say you have to get really specific and try really hard to make good beer, right? Well, I think there's good beer and there's great beer. Okay, fair. So it's not hard to make mm -hmm. good beer. Mm hmm. So try it. Yeah, and right? you, know, you know what? Your first beer will not be your best beer. The first time you cook, it's not your best meal. It's the first time you do anything, it's not your best. Right. It's your learning time. But it's a lot easier than one would think. Oh, for I guess sure. is what I'm, I'm well, getting at. Well, it's not an intimidating hobby. Just try it. It's not. Yeah, just try it. Just do it. And for someone who doesn't cook? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, like, you're not, like, the kitchen is not your primary place to hang out in your house. That's true. Let's go there. And <laughs> so, you're still really comfortable doing it. Yeah. It's not bad. But I think it's that's a good bad. testament to it. Yeah, it is a good testament. You don't to have it. to be chefing it up. Kenny asks, "Do you have Ruper soda kits?" Kenny, we sure do. Mm hmm. I actually designed them. Uh, we do have Ruper soda kits, and uh, we have both the ingredients and the equipment kits. So, and not only do we have Ruper, but we have thirteen other flavors. So, mm -hmm. yeah, come on in or go online. 
Uh, just look up soda making kits and right. you'll find all your ingredients. Homebrew Ohio soda making equipment kit will get you what you need to make any of them. And we do plan on eventually expanding that maybe into like hard seltzer mm -hmm. types of things. I just it's have in, to get my office works. longer. <laughs> Kenny says, cool, thanks. We'll be in. Sweet. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, so just quickly, because I only pulled a few kits, I'm going to just oh, do read it. Yeah. through the list. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in getting the one gallon kit, like I said before, 10% off on any of our equipment kits with the code MAKEBEER um, at checkout. And that's six different equipment kits. There's going to be the one gallon kit that we showed today. And then the five gallon kit, which is just pretty much scaled up. And then the other few options are basically those same basic equipment kits with a few different bits and bobbles um, to make the process a little bit easier, I guess. So if, if you're looking for five gallon though, I would go with the Brewer's Beast kit. It's a mm -hmm. 1003 is what it's called when you see it online. It's a 1003 Beast and then you have the choice between what would be called a 1003 BB, which means it's got a plastic carboy, or the 1003, which has a glass carboy. Mm -hmm. That one does come with a 20-quart uh, brew pot, so it is complete. Um, and I, I recommend, and most brewers recommend, having a designated brew pot for brewing that you would never use with food because food has a natural oil to most things. And you don't want that in the pot. Right. So it's nice to have a separate pot. If you do the one gallon kit, just get a nice um, stainless steel brew pot and then don't let anybody else use it. Right. <laughs> um, so I'll just quickly read through the list of the 18 different one gallon kits that we have. Um, just in case one of these ones didn't get you excited. <laughs> so we have American Brown Ale, the American Classic that I talked about, American Red, American Wheat, um, the Belgian Saison, Belgian Triple. Now, the Belgian Triple is, if you like beers with a high ABV, it's going to be 8.5 to 9%, so it's up Ooh. there. Uh, and that's what, for anyone that doesn't know, that's kind of what Triple uh, means, is it's going to be up there. And that's going to have Galena and Brewer's Gold Hops. So and on that one, too, watch your head space, because anything that brews to that high of ABV is going to be a very, very vigorous fermentation. You don't want to pop the lids off. Gotcha. So you may even want to kind of um, adjust your, your equipment to be brewing um, with a blow-off hose or something like that. Mm-hmm. We should maybe do a future video about that or something. We that have an old video, video about an old it. Video. <laughs> it's an old one. <laughs> I love looking through the archives when I first got here. Um, so let's see. Chocolate Stout that we talked about. Grapefruit IPA. The Imperial IPA, uh, just an I a regular old IPA, a uh, Kolsch, uh, Mosaic IPA, Orange Ghost, Pale Ale, Pineapple Honey Wheat Porter, and then Raspberry Golden Ale. And I think you missed the other st the regular stout, Imperial Stout. Did I? Yep. Huh. Oh yeah, I did. I went you right got, past like, it. Boom. <laughs> so the Imperial Stout too. That's another one with super high ABV. Um, it's going to be 8.1 to 8.6. So, Stephen White says, hey, Paula. Hi, Steve. It's been a long time. <laughs> is he a home brewer? He is a home brewer. Actually, he is a, um, distinguished winemaker. Mmm. Lots and lots and lots of awards for this guy. He's amazing. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, come on in. The store's open. So. Just now. I mean, like, it's just been a few days, so we yeah. just kind of opened quietly to see if we could be ready. We're not really ready, but we're here. Yeah, our store is a... It's a I, disaster. I'm gonna, yeah, okay. I was going to say it's a bit of a mess, but she put it better. It's... it's I call disaster. it like it is. It's a disaster. <laughs> but we're open. We're trying. We're trying. I made some signs, right? So there's we some prices. We have some prices. Most things are out. We're, you know what? But we've got a whole warehouse behind us. We'll get what we need. Mm -hmm. um, and then before we go... Um, I, I didn't know this. I sent you an email. I have, oh, oops. <laughs> I've been out of the office. Maybe I didn't hit send. Um, before I go, I'm going to mention the code one more time. Uh, so it's 10% off any beer equipment kits with the code MAKEBEER at checkout now until Saturday. Um, so get an equipment kit for yourself, get an equipment kit for someone else, get an equipment kit for your mom, because Mother's Day is May 9th. Well, and shop for Christmas and put it away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but on that note, Paul's really excited about this. She I just know. saw it on my list. Um, Zach 
from Firelands Home Brewing. Is that right? Firelands, Firelands Home Brew Club. Club is coming in. We have been thinking that we need to do a video about kegging, but Paul and I are not the people to do that. Mm -hmm. We got to know your limitations. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we got him to agree to come in next Thursday for our Thirsty Thursday, and he's going to do a small segment about kegging. Um, so I gotta ask him what beer he wants to drink. <laughs> He'll yeah. probably bring one of his own. Oh, I would love that if he did. That'd be so cool. He is really good. Yeah, I'm super excited to meet the guy because we've been talking on and off. We wanted to do this before everything, like the pandemic started and whatever. Well, let me do a quick shout out too because we did a, before the pandemic hit, we did a, um, a contest with the Firelands Homebrew Club. And we tasted all of their different home brews. I remember seeing that. Uh huh. And the one that won was a was a session. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was Zach's. Oh really? Yeah. So you could go on our our home our homebrew Ohio site, and um, if you went to the Fireland session I um IPA right? Yeah, Fireland session, session IPA. IPA. We um, made a kit. We made a kit. It's and our it's first his, and only kit, right? It's ours and yeah. it's his and. And five dollars for every kit that we sell goes right to the homebrew club. Oh, so that's to so support cool. our local homebrewers. Yeah. And that was Zach's kit. Wow. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know the part about the five dollars and I didn't know that it was Zach's. It's Zach's and, and so we that's we cool. are donating proceeds so that we can continue to support our homebrewers locally. Yeah. Which we're open, so Yay! we can do, because everyone can come on in. Steven says, I'm going to try kegging wine so I can carbonate some wine. That'd be cool. Oh, Zach's on. Oh, hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. Yeah, Fireland's Homebrew Club. Looking forward to talking to everyone. I will happily bring something fun. Looking yes. forward to it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Well, yes. normally our lives go for a little bit shorter than this, so I think it's time to sign off. People but have to there, go back to work. There's a lot of stuff to talk about today. I'm not mad about it. I'm not either. So, um, yeah, next week, uh, stay tuned for Zach coming in talking about kegging. And thank you all so much for watching. We have a lot of fun with this. Well, I have a lot of fun. I do. I know Paula has a lot of fun because it's like 10 o'clock and she's like, are you ready? <laughs> I know. I'm ready to go. So, um, with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and we will see you next Thursday for our next Thirsty Thursday. Cheers. Cheers. And we're ending camera one. And ending camera.